My name's Kimmy Warner. I'm a spear fisher woman from Hawaii. I got a call one day from this woman named Pia. Well, I'll tell you actually how the whole idea came okay. up. She invited me to enter a free diving contest in Chile on the island of Robinson Crusoe. I've never even heard of the island Robinson Crusoe. I knew of the book based on a shipwrecked sailor, but I didn't know that that book was based on a true story about this island. I'm a hunter. I free dive for food. I don't compete for depths. I used to compete in spearfishing. I actually was a national champion and then an international champion, and I got to travel the world competing. But I realized that I wasn't really seeing the world. The more that I focused on competing, the less I got to know the people. And, and I started to think about fish as points. And that's just, that's not why my dad ever taught me to dive. He taught me that fish was a way of life. Fish was food to share with your family. When I explained that to Pia, she told me that that's exactly why she was asking me. It feels good. It feels good to sign up for this competition, even if I am amongst all the national champions back here that I know are going to blow me out of the water. Carlos Costa, I did three world records. Herbert did 100, I did 101. All the time, the numbers are in your mind. Free diving for me is self-discovery, you know, like pushing your limit and seeing how far can you go. Free diving is a weird sport, but at the same time, it's intoxicating. In order to do it, you really need to learn to trust yourself. How are you feeling, Kimmy? <laughs> Very foreign. <laughs> it just feels wrong to get in the water with no fins. And I think that that trust is what ends up giving you hope. and that hope can translate to other parts of your life. Oh, I felt so good, though. I was so close, and I wanted it. Five years ago, this island was hit by a tsunami. They had no warning. The only alarm that sounded was the gong that was being hit by a 12-year-old girl who woke up in the middle of the night and saw that the ocean was changing. People screaming, no warning, but no protocol, so it's real. Their town was destroyed. A lot of people died. It came all the way up here. The truck got stuck in the treetop and the rocks. Kids were ripped from their parents' arms. And Isabella was inside, and she held the breath and uh, stay there for, I uh, don't know, 30 seconds. I jumped into the, the roof, I tried to break the window, I couldn't break the window. And the ones that were fortunate enough to survive are traumatized. The ocean's a scary place to them. We took a day off of competing to use our sport for something more important. You're in charge of their safety. Uno, no. We got the kids in the water and taught them to play games and taught them to hold their breath. We want to show them that it's a tool for them to be safer. Watching them gain their confidence, it was beautiful. It defined resilience. These days, I'm a strong believer that if I am going to travel, I want to get to know the local community because that's where the heart is. Just shared ideas. We talked about what it's like living on an island, the need to boost an economy, and also being balanced with the need to protect your natural resources. And there I met a man named Christian. Christian said that he'd like to show us the ecosystem on land and the problems they face there. So we left the ocean for a day and went to meet Christian in his special place. All along the hike, I was just picking these blackberries the whole time and just eating them because they tasted so good and I was so excited about them. But then we met Christian and he explained that the blackberries aren't good for the ecosystem. These are the invasive species, the maki and the blackberry, that 
are already sprouting up in this area that has a whole bunch of native plants. And so we're just doing a very tiny part in trying to remove what we can see. The native plants, they take a much longer time to, to grow and to get sunlight and to get water and all of these just natural controls, whereas the introduced species, the invasive plants, when they come here, they thrive very quickly and it's just, it, it's not a good thing. It's because they don't belong in this ecosystem. And as these native plants die, so do the native animals because that's their home, that's their habitat. Christian showed us a place where he spent years removing these invasive species and it allowed the native forest to restore itself. I didn't expect to be so moved. Something really hit me there. This place was powerful. My name is Felipe Paredes. I'm the mayor of, the, of uh, Juan Fernandez Archipelago. Felipe is the youngest mayor in the country. He's a really cool guy. I really don't want to be a politician. I want to surf, climbing, uh, free dive. Felipe ended up climbing the highest peak of the island with these biologists in search of native plants. and they found a plant that was deemed to be extinct. Like that's a victory, that's a miracle. When things start to get lost, it's our job to find them. It's our job to find our way back to them. Then it was his idea to have a free diving contest. I think Felipe always knew that it was not about a contest. He wanted to bring the right people in so that we could get his community in the water and get them to celebrate the ocean. This is a very special place in the planet. The atmosphere that we have created, everybody tears up for the other. It's about create consciousness in our society. <laughs> It was really fun for me to hit that maximum depth, but it was much more fun to watch the locals get some of their personal best dives. Marcelo got his personal best, Felipe dove to 30 meters, and they were all hugging and cheering in the water, saying, we're back, we're back. I'm back, I'm back. My favorite part of the trip was when the local chef, Tamara, asked me if I could go get some octopus for her. She wanted to make this traditional dish called disco for our award ceremony. This is my element. Hunting for food to share with people that I care about, that is who I am. And so I asked some of the local girls that work at the lodge if they wanted to come with me. And we all set off to find octopus. I showed them how I tickle it out of the hole and then bite its brain to kill it immediately. I then swim it out into deeper waters where I remove the guts because even though I don't eat that part, other fish do. We got surrounded by fish. That's key to protecting your home and nature. It's putting yourself in the depths of it. That's how you learn to connect with it, to know what to take, what to leave, and how to work in harmony and share what you have. <laughs> That's what can get us on our feet again.
whether it's in our personal lives or our community or on a global level. We all live on one big island. And the more that we're able to connect with it, the more we're able to connect with ourselves and one another. And that's how we find our way home. You inspire us. <laughs> we inspire you. You definitely inspire me. We need to believe that it's possible that people understand that we need our planet. The planet is an island. We can't escape from our planet.